worship part two. Yeah, now last week worship part one. Let's open John chapter four, verse twenty-three and verse twenty-four. How do we worship God? First. Uh, main point: right attitude. What kind of right attitudes do we need then? It's worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Hebrews twelve twenty eight with reference and all. James chapter four verse ten. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. Luke four eight. Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. Colossians three twenty three twenty four and Matthew twenty two three thirty seven. Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind. To God, giving the blessing and to our Lord Jesus. Okay, James 4, 7. Submit yourself. Total surrender. The second main point that we must bring into worship is offering. The Bible says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Can be money. Okay? So when you give your offering every Sunday, there's different types of offering also. Tithe, the 10% of what you have worked for. Maybe donation, when somebody is in need, you know, mission. But not just money, church. Time. Whenever you give your time, rather than spending your time with having coffee, you are sacrificing that time for the energy. If it's not painful for you to give, it's not a sacrifice. Offering and sacrifice, it's meant to be painful. Because you lose what you're supposed to be able to have, you know. God sees that as a sacrifice, as an offering that He takes the life. And of course, your reach will await for you in heaven. Amen? And then songs and music, 2 Chronicles 28, 29, uh, Psalm 102 talks about music that we do also for uh, as a uh, praise and worship. And not only that, uh, this also include the new songs of praise, okay? You know, uh, in Psalm 40, verse 3, Psalm 96, verse 1, Psalm 98, verse 1, and several others. I found a total of nine verses in the Bible talking about new songs of praise. Because if I could find nine verses talking about songs of praise, new songs of praise, it means all of us will, we have to make that songs of praise. Don't just watch the worship leader when the worship leader, Hallelujah, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. No, you're supposed to do it also. You don't have to mimic. You don't have to follow, of course, because all of us sing with our own way, okay? So if pastors, pastor always do this vocal gymnastic, Hallelujah. But Pastor, I cannot do that. Who asked you to do that? You're just making your new songs. If you follow me, actually, it's not a new song. You are following me, isn't that right? Although sometimes, yes, when we feel like this now, we sing together in unity. But when it comes to new songs of praise, you have as much right as the worship leader to make your own songs of praise. And the Lord will consider every song of praise that comes out of us as a separate offering individually from all of us. If you believe, say amen. Okay? So... Not only that, sounds of praise. So, what is sounds of praise? Not just about words or hallelujah. Sometimes you just. Or you just scream. That's just sound. It's not singing, right? But if you make those sounds in reference and power of God, if you make those sounds as a form of worshiping God, you can do it with keyboard. Sound of praise before with the shofar. Mm -hmm. That's also sounds of praise, church. Okay, and also include joyful noise. Let's do it together. Clap our hands. One, two, three. Let's do it one more time by shouting hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah! So noisy, but it's a joyful noise, church. And God takes delight in those type of joyful noise in Psalm. 98 verse 4, if you want to read, don't be afraid with this noise. It's a joyful noise. God wants that. Not just that. When it comes to music, also, well, practice. That's the truth. If you don't practice, you are not prepared. Okay? And not just that. In, in worship, you clap your hands, okay? But that's in posture. Posture is also very important. Now, uh, Psalm 95.6. You know, there are different types of posture. You can raise your hands like this, you can raise your hands up like that, you can clap your hands. Sometimes the worship leader will ask you to bow down. Nowadays we don't do that much anymore because it's dirty. Yeah, but back in those days, remember? Just go on the knee and, and you know, and just worship God, you know? Uh, any types of postures. And not because of performance, but because of the Holy Spirit leading us to do that in reference of Him. As a representation, when we raise our hands, it's re it represents us 
reaching out to him the same way Peter reached out to Jesus when Peter started getting into the water when he walked on water you know so when it comes to music includes maybe different types of instruments can be offering also maybe even with a choir you know we're not having the capacity yet but of course we pray you know in the future we're, we're gonna have sis Joyce or sis Michelle leading worship and in the back we'll be like I raise a hallelujah wow hundred of people at the back it's amazing right now pray more because pray is also worship hallelujah right so including those things choir dance flags also prayer prayer okay we mentioned a little bit about that prayer and listening because as much as worship leaders ask you to make sense of praise, sometimes we're, I always tell the worship leader, if you are led by the Spirit to just go down and just don't do anything, and just be silent, just be silent. Because it gives time for you and me to listen to God also during that time, okay? This can be uh, the type of offerings that you can give to the Lord also. The last one, Romans 12 verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, Brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. This is the real essence of worship, church. You can do all these things, money, time, energy, pain, songs and music, posture, prayer, listening, perfectly. But if you don't give yourself fully to the Lord, then nothing at all. Even if you're perfect in doing all these things, but if you don't end up taking care of your, of your holiness, then... There's no point in bringing all this worship. That's the reason why there's still so many Christians who come to church every Sunday and cry and cry. Speaking tongue even, church. Hallelujah. You know, oh, bow on the knees and seen by many that oh, yes, repentance. But the moment they get back again, the normal weekdays, they live with somebody that's not her husband or his wife. They still keep on doing the same. But I'm praying that this is not the case for you and me, if you believe, say, yeah. mm -hmm. When we total surrender, we total surrender not just money, time, songs, posture, prayer, and listening, but we give a total surrender of our life as well. We're never going to be perfect once again. Our worship will never be perfect, trust me. Now we're so much better than like last year, right? Our worship. But I'm telling you, every time we think that we're doing it better, we realize that there's still so many things to be done to be better. We're never going to be perfect until Jesus returns second time. So you don't need to think about perfection, church. You just need to think about how to surrender, giving yourself, and doing the best for our Lord in worship, whether it is in church, whether it is about your work, or every aspect of your life. Give the best to Him. And I always end it, God is going to do the rest for you. Amen? Let's stand up. I'm going to close right away because of time.